part of our cardiovascular lab is looking at arteries and veins in this torso model. Now please keep in mind this heart is smaller than the heart model that we have and does not have the structures quite as nice. So it probably is a better place to test them on the heart model instead of this heart model. Pulling this out, this is the arch of the aorta here and it's pretty hard to tell that that's what's happening here. So as we follow these around, we can see the left common carotid and it splits up here. So up at the top here, we're going to have a blood vessel that goes into the skull and that will be the internal carotid artery and one that supplies blood to the outside area, outside the skull, to the face, to the ear, that is the external carotid. And that is why this area has the name common carotid artery. We have the right version of that as well. So these are both common carotid arteries here. This little bit off to the side is that third thing coming off the arch, the third artery, and that is the left subclavian artery. We can see this is the brachiocephalic artery here, which breaks or bifurcates into that right common carotid and the right subclavian that you can see following through over here and will continue on into the shoulder and the arm. Blood vessels returning blood. We have the subclavian vein on either side right here. Now instead of being called the carotid, this is in blue the jugular. And where the internal jugular and the subclavian artery join, we end up with the brachiocephalic vein. So here it's fairly short, it's a little bit longer on the left side. The two brachiocephalic veins join and become the superior vena cava. Now, one other set of blood vessels that we should look at briefly here, this structure here is the thyroid. So these arteries coming off the common carotid are the superior thyroid arteries. There's one on each side. And the vein that is draining this is the inferior thyroid vein. All right, now what we're gonna do then is whoosh our way down. And down here we can see that we have the aorta continuing. So this is after the arch in the descending aorta and we are now in the abdominal region here. The major blood vessel in blue here is the inferior vena cava. Now the aorta here has one, two, three bumps on it. This first bump is called the celiac trunk. It's got three major blood vessels going to different locations on it. The second anterior bump here is the superior mesenteric artery. The third is the inferior mesenteric artery. Off to the sides, going to both kidneys, we can see red and blue. The red is the renal artery, the blue is the renal vein. All right, continuing lower, we get to the end of the aorta and it bifurcates. The blood vessels on either side here, these are the right and left common iliac arteries. Note we have the term common like we had in carotid which means we are going to see a split. And the split can be a hard angle to get to. So as we get down here, we see a blood vessel going in and a blood vessel continuing down. We are on the right side. This is the right hypogastric, also can be called internal iliac artery. And this is the external iliac artery that would continue down the leg. On this side, we have that same distinction. Here's the internal artery or hypogastric coming off and then we have that external continuing into the leg where it then becomes the femoral artery, referring to the femur. This is that femoral vein that we see in here. So this is the external iliac vein, the hypogastric vein in here, and then the common iliac vein hypogastric, external iliac, common iliac vein is the short bit. They join together these two right and left common iliacs to form the inferior vena cava which takes blood back up to the heart.
You have also the gonadal arteries on your list for lab. And these are the gonadal arteries and veins on either side right here. That looks like everything on the list.